All right, guys, so we are all hitched up to the new Tilt Deck Texas Pride trailer. We are gonna take this on a fun trip today to demonstrate some of the technology behind this trailer. I think you're gonna enjoy this video, guys. Hang tight, we'll be right back. All right, guys, so we just got here to Ewald Kubota in Corpus Christi, Texas. They got locations all over Texas, and they are the local Kubota dealership. They have a huge inventory of Kubota tractors. This is definitely the place guys go to play with toys, because they sure got a bunch of them. All right, so you guys have probably figured out what we're here to do today. With the help from the folks from Ewald Kubota in Corpus Christi, Texas, we are gonna demonstrate to you how a tilt trailer works, specifically a non-powered tilt trailer. So basically one that does not use a power or pump operated hydraulic cylinder. This one has a hydraulic cylinder in it, but it is more of a gravity tilt. So once you put pressure to it, it's gonna slow the whole thing down. We just have to pick which tractor we wanna load. Now, if you wanna go super heavy, you could go with some of the construction equipment stuff. These tractors right here are relatively light. They're not gonna be crazy light, but they are still relatively light. When you start getting into mini excavators, when you start getting into skid steers and track steers, and when you start getting into these larger commercial style tractors is really where you're gonna see some weight. But we just have to pick amongst this huge selection of tractors which one or ones we're gonna to use to demonstrate the trailer. All right guys, so we are on to the truck and trailer part of this. Got my good friend Brian, who is my handy assistant out here. We're gonna demonstrate with Brian how this system works. So this is a tilt deck trailer, but only half of it tilts, or about 17 feet of it. Then I got six feet up here that is stationary. And what I need to do now is release it by pulling this little lever right here. You tilt this up and then the lever locks back into place. So Brian, if you could, go ahead and walk to the very back of the trailer and kind of stand there. Once he walks back, you'll see how the whole assembly tilts up. Under here, you can see the hydraulic cylinder. And all this is doing is transferring hydraulic fluid from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom of the cylinder. And there's a ram inside of there that simply moves it around. So it just goes through here. Now what they've added is this little valve here where I can shut this off. So now it's closed. So if you walk up to the front of the trailer now, Brian, it might move maybe about three or four inches, but it's not gonna close on its own. All right, so you should be able to stand right up there. Go ahead and hop up and down a little bit. There you go. It's like a trampoline. Yeah. So once you bring a vehicle up here, you simply have to go to the valve and it's gonna allow the hydraulic fluid to go throughout the line. And you'll see how it will start dropping down on its own. Once it gets to the bottom here, if he hops down on it, you'll see where it locks in place. Go ahead and hop down. It's down. So now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pull it out, and now it's locked in place. One thing you wanna be sure to do is to pull up to make sure that clip is in and there's no way that this will come down. So go ahead and walk to the end of it real quick. And you can see nothing's moving. Hop up and down a little bit, show people how safe it is. Nice and stationary. So that's in essence how this is gonna work. So a few things about this trailer, if you haven't watched the other videos, is that this is a Texas Pride trailer. It is their stationary tilt deck, stationary deck, tilt deck. It's actually their 20,000 pound built trailer. And we derated this trailer to 12,000 pounds on the sticker. So all that simply means is that the trailer is overbuilt. That's really all it means. What is the difference between this and say a 14,000 pound GVWR trailer? Let's go over that. 
First of all, this has the incredibly heavy duty 12,000 pound rated front hydraulic landing gear. This is really cool. The same type of landing gear you might get in a large hot shot trailer or if you're going for an upgraded hydraulic system. It's controlled by remote and it is crazy fast. Coming back here, another big difference is the fact that it has reinforced bracing throughout the trailer. Typically, your bracing would be on 16-inch centers. It's on 12-inch centers here, so there's bracing every 12 inches on this trailer. Also, the running gear. This is really where everything shines on this trailer to make it an overbuilt trailer. 18-ply J-rated tires, 17-inch Alcoa wheels, that is crazy. Plus, it has additional leaf springs and firmer leaf springs to be able to support additional weight. And it's on 9,000 pound axles. You heard me right, 9,000 pounds. So I have 18,000 pounds worth of axle capacity. Whenever fully loaded, I'm gonna have roughly, I'm gonna say about 4,000 pounds on the back of the truck if I were at 20,000 pounds. But again, this trailer was built at a rated 12,000 pounds. 20,000 pound built trailer, 12,000 pound rated trailer, which gives it the cargo capacity to hold your traditional skid steer, your traditional mini excavator, you know, any of the tractors without any problem at all. And if you're using this in an agricultural setting where you're off-road and you're not going to be using it on public highways, then you can always go all the way up to your maximum of about a 15,000 pound cargo capacity because that's what typically this trailer would be designed to carry, 15,000 pounds. The trailer by itself weighs about 5,000 pounds, a little over 5,000 pounds. Pounds. So again, this is one heck of a strong trailer. All right, guys, so we are here again at Ewald Kubota, Corpus Christi, Texas. And with us today, we have Ruben. Ruben, what do you do here? I'm a salesman here at Ewald Kubota in Corpus Christi. Yeah, and you know, we've been cracking up over stuff over the last 10 minutes here, and he's actually uh, a pretty cool guy, man. Anyways, guys, we were looking at these three pieces of equipment. Let's talk about them. So let's walk to this first one real quick. So I already know what this is naturally, but I'll let you explain. What do we have done here with this uh, this Kubota, what would you call this thing? Uh, so UTV? this one here is an RTV X1140 that's been customized. We do a bunch of custom work here. We can do anything from your rims, obviously, like you see, all the way up to the, the most um, technical installations, electrical, hydraulic. We can do all kinds of stuff to these things. I see that it's power steering, and this does have a diesel in it too, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. This is the three-cylinder diesel that comes in this thing. Um, it, your top speed on this thing is normally going to be about 25 miles an hour. So you're not going to get a whole lot of speed, but I promise you, something like this, you'll pull the house off the blocks. And that's what I was wondering. So from a uh, an engine perspective, does diesel, is it really for the torque or is it for the fuel economy or something like it's this? It's more for the torque. It's more, Well, actually both. It's more for the, for the torque, the fuel economy, and just the brute force power that these machines have over something that's like a centrifugal drive belted uh, gasoline engine. All right, Ruben, so someone wanted to buy this as configured with the wet sound, with the light bars, gun rack, um, custom wheels, tires, as equipped, what would someone look at spending on something like this? Something like this one here, you'd probably be looking right around twenty-four to 26000 depending on the different features and the different accessories you want added to it. Okay, what about base price? Let's say they don't care about any of that stuff. They just want this in its most stripped down form, but with the same engine and drive line. See, that's the plus side to Kubota. They offer you a general purpose um, application, a uh, work site application, or you can get your camo, which is your R application. So in those, you can see anywhere from about 15, 16,000 up to about 17,500. So there's there's okay. a variation in there. So you got roughly seven to 10 grand worth of upgrades on That's this exactly specific right. one. That's exactly right. Gotcha. All right, let's move on to next in line. Next in line. All right, so in front of us, looks like we have a bucket loading tractor. I say it right? Yeah, that's exactly right. This is actually a utility tractor, okay. but it works the same way. I mean, it's got a front bucket on it. This is your L2501. This is your um, entry level, if, if I would say, to your ranch slash farm utility tractor. Okay. This is what you would use if you just had, you know, anywhere from five to ten acres and all you were doing was using it to level your roads, maintain a couple of, you know, farm animals, goats, stuff like that. Okay. What's one of these way, I guess, as equipped with the bucket loader on it? As equipped here, you're probably looking at about a good three to 3,500 pounds, 3,000 pounds to 3,500. That's, okay. of course, the tractor weight, uh, operation weight of that thing with the front end loader. Okay. Good deal. So something like this as configured, what would you look at spending for it? This right here is configured with a front end loader. You're going to be looking at about, I'm going to say... 
21,000 so right here, about 20,000 right here with the front end loader on it. Okay, and if somebody doesn't want the front end loader and they just need the tractor, let's say it's for leveling or they're going to be pulling some uh, piece of equipment behind it, yeah. what would you generally say that would cost without the bucket? About eighteen five to 19,000. Okay, so this yes, is this is actually a lot less than I thought. I, I looked at tractors like this and originally thought they were going to be in the $30,000 price range, but it looks like you can get it pretty well equipped. And is this a diesel motor that's in here? Yes, sir. This is a diesel engine as well, and it is the 25 horse engine. So this has no emissions on it, zero emissions. So it is just a pass-through engine. It's an engine with an exhaust. That's okay. it. No filters, no exhaust fluid, no nothing. So that's one of the biggest perks and benefits about this tractor over some of the other ones. I gotcha. Well, very nice. Let's move on now to something a little bit more, let's say construction oriented, more uh, off highway construction. This is a, this is what you call an excavator. This one's a mini excavator. It is the KX71. Different features to these things. I mean, the way that Kubota designs these things, they divine, they design them with manufactured, all the manufactured arms with the forged um, uh, couplers here. Okay. So you're going to see down here on the yoke, it's got it forged as well. It is a full one piece manufactured, so there's no uh, weaknesses. It's all rigid. It's all one rigid piece of machinery. Okay, very cool. So let's say that you are starting your own lawn care landscaping business or you're going to be doing uh, foundation work, things like that. What I guess what would the best application for this tractor, what type of industry would the very best use of this tractor be in? This one here, this is, we, we normally sell these to a lot of the, uh, I want to say irrigation and plumbing, because it is small enough, it's not the tiniest one we offer, but it is small enough to still be able to get in and out of yards, with some modifications to the gate obviously, but it, you can get it in there, you can, you know, uh, get to where you need to be, it's not overly heavy to where you're going to be sinking in the ground. It's, it's just an all-around worker, you know, work piece of equipment. And what's the weight of this one, the operator weight? The weight on this one, you're going to be looking at about 6,300 pounds. 6,300, um, and that is the operating weight with, you know, with no dirt on it, no nothing. Okay, and before we move further, some people may get confused as I was between how you determine weight of a tractor like this versus a truck or a trailer. So can you real quickly kind of talk about how the weight is determined on something like this versus what people might normally associate? with the weight exactly so weight on these things they already are determined with what we consider a wet weight it's already with fluids with an operator the operator's weight is 150 pounds as described but it already comes with that you know in in, in, uh, in the uh, in the in the operation weight okay so anytime you're talking about shipping weight that might be without things attached to it right but the operation weight or the operating weight is with a person in as configured from the factory with a bucket or whatever it comes that's exactly with. right shipping weight's going to be without a bucket on here so without the different features right you're not going to have uh certain models are going to have different size tracks certain models are going to have different size buckets so that's going to make a difference in the weight okay as far as and that could be a difference between something like this a track loader which has a bucket versus one that's shipped without a bucket that's exactly right all right that's exactly right speaking of what does one of these run if someone wanted to come in and buy a unit like this and one thing i've noticed is it doesn't have an enclosed cockpit or yes, basically sir. seating area so is that an option on something this size or do you generally have to go up to something a little larger that is an option on something like this they do have uh there are certain models that uh, obviously here in south texas we would not want to use there are certain models you don't want to use because the cab features that they have some of the ones that Kubota offer only have a heater those are the ones that they base more for the north you know uh, north of the united states where okay. it gets really cold and frigid temperatures okay and some of these you can get with air conditioning that's too exactly right right yes sir that's the that's the enclosed cab systems this is a rop system so this is just an open station you know i'd just be afraid of hitting something with a big hornet's nest on it and just being exposed like that so being enclosed seems to make a little bit more sense to That's me. But exactly right. It's a lot more comfort. I mean, you're going to pay for comfort. You're going to get what you need. You know, yep. get what you need for your application. All right. So from a pricing perspective, if somebody wanted to get into this tractor, kind of as configured, what can they expect to pay? On this one, you could see r roughly around thirty-five to thirty-six and a half thousand, right there. Wow. So that is actually a lot lower than I had thought. I thought that this would be up in the fifty-five, sixty thousand range. Yes, sir. That's and, really and cool. That's, what, that's one of the things that Kubota does benefit over a bunch of our competitors. I will say that they are fairly priced. They are really fairly priced. Um, we have a big saying with our companies, you, no matter what you make, you can own a Kubota. You know what? I really want a Kubota right now. <laughs> Let's move on to this beautiful beast right here because 
out of everything you have on your lot, I love excavators. I absolutely do. This is actually like a childhood dream to own something like this. What kid doesn't like to dig in the dirt? Seriously, but these are just super cool because they look aggressive. I mean, it's got this huge bucket on the front of it. I know there's a big difference between something like this and your traditional tractor bucket loader. Um, this probably weighs three times as much as something like that, I'd imagine. It actually but does. But I know that these come in generally three sizes, and this to me looks like a large frame unit. Yes, sir. So what's the difference between a large, a medium, and a small frame unit? And why would somebody want one over the other? Because I know it doesn't always come down to bigger is better with one of these. It doesn't. Um, obviously, like he says, you like you were saying, you obviously you hear the bigger is better in Texas. Not always. There's different applications, just like with that thing, with the excavators. You're going to want uh, lighter weight for hauling, transportation purposes. You're going to want lighter weight for application on somebody's grass or in certain, you know, uh, textures as far as land. Um, in this one, this is the 95. They do offer, we do offer the uh, SVL 65 now and the, six, the SVL 75 and the SVL 95. This is more of your uh, ranch mulching, you know, uh, land clearing. This is more of that is what you're going to see this in or something that, that, that requires a heavy amount of um, equipment to dig up a lot of like dirt. Like site prep up. maybe, exactly, right? Exactly, site prep. That's exactly right. Uh, this one does feature the high flow system. So this one would be great for a land clearing application because most of your land clearing, mulchers, brush cutters, stuff like that, the majority of the stuff you're going to see that's, that's constant rotation mm -hmm. would require a high flow for the extra cooling and the extra GPM. Okay, well. even something like a jackhammer maybe? That's you're right. You're going to be busting up concrete? That's exactly right. Your jackhammers, these things would handle it perfectly all day. Okay. Now... Something like this in terms of price point, let me guess, and I could be wrong, but I'm guessing probably mid-70s? You're going to be seeing about mid-60s. Okay, so mid it's a little less. Mid-60s, high 60s, somewhere around there. Once again, depending on what you're going to add to it. Because see, just because this is the largest 95, you don't have to have the cab. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have the high flow. It does automatically come with the standard wide track. Um, there's just different features that this thing does offer. Obviously, the radio-ready cab. It's got the air condition with the full 360 um, circulation for the AC unit. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's a beast. It's a monster. You know, and I know how to operate one of these, actually. They're relatively easy to drive and use and maneuver. They're just, the controls, they're two joysticks, essentially. And, you know, one side controls your movement. The other side controls all your bucket operations. A little bit more to the excavator is what I found. But in terms of, you know, ease of use, both of these have a very short learning curve. You don't, That's exactly right. It really doesn't take much. You know, a lot of times nowadays you see a lot of customers that come in and they want the older style operation, you know the H pattern and such as such as stuff like that. Uh, these are a lot easier because like you said, they are two joysticks. It's real simple. If you can play a video game, you can operate a machine. I Absolutely. Mean, it's, basic. It's, it's very, very simple. Very cool. So what would the operational weight of this be? Operational weight on something like this, you're looking at about, I want to say it's about 9,500 pounds. Okay. So slightly under at. 10K is That's what you're exactly looking at. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. And if you were to use, let's say, the trailer we're going to use today to hold something like this, that would really be a great pairing for the two, right? Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, if you got something that, if you got a trailer with uh, double, well, let's see, you can you can get away with a good trailer that's probably got a fourteen thousand uh, gross vehicle weight, you know, rating on yep. it. Yep. So that's going to put you right at around ten k worth of capacity. Yeah. That's exactly right. Perfect. All right, guys, so I wanted to make sure that I got you all all the information on the equipment in front of us, specifically usage, pricing, and the weight. So we have that now. That right there weighs just under a ton. This right here is going to weigh about a ton and a half. This right here is going to weigh about three tons. And then this one right here is going to weigh about five tons. So... Like I said, we went from lightest all the way to heaviest. Hang tight for the next video because that's where we're going to load these tractors and that RTV on the back of the trailer. So, again, I didn't want to skimp out on any footage and I wanted to provide you all the details on this. And unfortunately, that took up a whole video. So we're going to split this into two videos. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, now is a great time to subscribe so you can see all this equipment being loaded onto the Tilt Deck trailer. We'll talk to you again very soon.